Alrighty, good morning traders and welcome to the Forex Morning Coffee Kickoff. Trust everyone has had a, a good morning so far. Uh, not a lot of fundamentals is out this morning. We do know that we do have the uh, uh, UK rate decision coming out on Thursday. We have the US rate decision coming out on uh, no, Wednesday. And then of course we've got this evening, we've got uh, the Aussie uh, CPI, quarterly CPI coming out this evening. But that's not how we trade, right? That's not what we're looking for. We're not really uh, interested in paying attention too much to the fundamentals when it comes to actually making trading decisions. Although we may look and, and pay attention to what's going on in the market based on news, but that's not how we trade, right? That's not how we trade. We trade based on setups, based on targets. And this is what we're going to do this morning. We're going to check out and see exactly what set up this week. We did take a look yesterday. If you missed the video yesterday, you may want to go ahead and take a look and see what the video was um, all about and what trades were set up yesterday. We're going to go ahead and take a look and see if we had additional trades. There were a, a few pinging positions that we were looking to get into this week. Uh, and I believe we picked up another one. We had five yesterday. I believe we picked up another trade uh, in the last 24 hours. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on. All right, so let's go to the uh, charts. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the first. I first want to grab my seat right here. Get really comfortable here. Uh, of course, the uh, um, the trades that we looked at uh, yesterday. There we go. We had a, a Euro Aussie trade. Uh, we were selling on Euro Aussie. We were uh, selling on uh, Pound Aussie. We were buying on Aussie JPY. We were buying on Aussie uh, Canadian and then Aussie US dollar we were buying as well. So all the Aussie crosses we were buying, we were selling on uh, the pound, uh, looks like pound Aussie and then uh, the Euro Aussie. So it looks like pretty much we've got all Aussie crosses across the board that we're actually um, selling. So all five of them were Aussies. Now let's go ahead and take a look and see what else we picked up right here. And I believe uh, the most recent uh, trade that was picked up which was this one right here, uh, another Aussie US dollar trade. So it looks like we have, uh, was that the only one? Let me see yeah. No, there it is. One, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six trades. So we actually picked up another Aussie trade right here uh, on Aussie US dollar. Let's go take a look at the Aussie US dollar and see what's going on right here. So we picked up two trades, two setups on the Aussie US dollar. Let's go to the Aussie US dollar right here. And let me just move it down here to that. And there it is, Aussie US dollar. Now we can see in the last 24 hours, um, last 24 hours we uh, uh, we've had lower uh, bearishness on the uh, the Aussie. What's actually gone very bearish this uh, this morning is uh, the Swiss franc and the pound. Pound has been the weakest so far this uh, last 24 hours. Swiss franc has been the second weakest. And then the uh, strongest that we've had is the JPY. If it's still strong JPY, we had that yesterday. Uh, and of course, the US dollar also gained a bit of strength as well. So both JPY and US dollar in the last 24 hours has started to move a little bit stronger than the other currency pairs. So let's take a look at Aussie right here. So we broke out of this level right here. If you watched my video on the, uh, if you watched the video on the weekly uh, outlet, we did talk about the uh, the Aussie dollar, and we mentioned that the Aussie dollar was going to come back down to support. You can see right here, it took out a low. There's the low right here, and as it takes out the low, bull score, uh, sorry, bear score a point, and now we're starting to see some pullback. Also, we spoke about the 1.618, which looks like it could be a little lower there. Now, remember, traders, we do look at uh, these 1.618s and extensions and all that good stuff. We see them as uh, support and resistance levels, and it's always I always I've always said in the past that these uh, levels are not a defined price, it's an area, all right? And so as price moves to the area of support and resistance, we'll be looking for a confirmation that price is bouncing and moving back up north. Now we said that we can look for a correction move, all right? 
Uh, oh, by the way, has everyone got their cup of coffee? Is everyone ready to rock and roll this morning? Are you ready to rock and roll? All right, because you've got to get the cup of coffee, you've got to get the caffeine in in order to be able to trade this market, uh, this morning at least. Um, all right, so this is the deal. So we're going to go ahead and check out the support. It's a good thing that we are finding support because look here, we are going to be keep buying in. We're going to buy in because we're anticipating price to move back up again. Now, what's very important is how far the market can move up. All right, we know that the targets that we trade has a very high uh, strike rate, which means about 97% of the time price moves to those targets. And if that's going to be the case, then we know that we could possibly see a good setup where price can go to support, bounce with that, and retrace. Now, how far can it retrace? Well, that depends where we are with inside the market cycle. Are we in wave three, in wave four, in wave five, or in wave two? What wave structure are we now in, and which phase of that structure are we now trading towards? Mm, excuse me, struggling this morning. Um, so we've got to take a look and see exactly where we're at regarding the wave. So I believe we're in a wave three. So if we're in a wave three, that means we're expecting wave four to move. Wave four doesn't take out wave one high, in this case low, all right? Uh, so we've got to check out wave uh, wave one low. We don't expect price to move up higher than that. So we're going to look at that being our highest point of retracement, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look over here. So there is uh, where we've taken a look at the previous low, but this is where wave, uh, uh, wave one is seen right here. There's wave one right here. So as price goes ahead and tests that, retests that level, this is what we're expecting. We're expecting price to retrace, but only retrace to a maximum level over here, all right? And if it does go up there, it may even give a little spike, maybe a little indecision candle right here, but we don't expect price to trade in this region, all right? And so if that's going to be the case, then we're going to go ahead and anticipate price to retrace back up again, but not to go ahead and retrace further than that seg section. All right, so that's important right there. We, we note that, we understand it. We're going to pay attention to that. Now, let's go ahead and take a look right here as I clean up this right here. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what is the market doing on the lower time frame. Because here is the one hour, this is the time frame that we follow right here. And we can see that we did have the, the market move a little bit lower. Our first entry point on this was at the uh, 67.73, I believe. Let's just double check on that. So there's the, uh, the first entry point, 67.73, uh, sorry, 77, not 73, my bad. So it was 77 we got in, not 73. I'm going to change that, make sure it's right. All right, there we go, 67.77. So that's our first entry point. Let's go ahead and put it in on the chart. So 67.77 is right about here. So this is where we picked up our first buy, right about there. There it is. And now we've just picked up our second buy, and our second buy is priced at uh, 67.38. So let me see here, 67.77, 67.38 right here. It looks like we've got a tight range on this one, 67.38, which is right down below right here, right at the end of the run. And uh, we're going to have to go ahead and see if this is going to hold us bullish. There it is there. All right, so this is the second trade that we've got going over here. Right, there's the one, and there's the other. Let's just make that smaller. All right, there it is. Now, now we're anticipating price to move up. Now, we said that price can move up to the second. Now, let's take a look at this price. What price is that? That's 68.42, right? So, we're looking at price to move up to 68.42. Now, what I want to go ahead and do here is I want to go ahead and check out to see if we can get price to move back to its level of uh, resistance. And I want to make sure that it's not going to be exceeding that wave one low. So let's take a look at wave one low right here. Wave one low is priced over here, and that is priced at uh, looks like 68.39. So 68.39. That's where that previous wave one low is at. 68.39. Now what do we say we're going to go for? 
What's that price we're gonna chase after? There it is there, 68.42. Sweet, that's perfect. All right, so if price starts working its way back up north, we're certainly gonna be able to get to that target before price turns around and heads back down south. Because why? Because we're in a wave four, traders, which means we're expecting price to still work its way back down south. We're looking for, looking for price to do something like this. So this is wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and then wave five, we're expecting it to work its way further down south. So we want to get out as market moves back up to retest this level. Now, once again, very important, all right? I'm not going to expect price to move to the pip. All right, when we come close to this level, all right, I'm going to go ahead and get the counter dodge. Just like the uh, Euro JPY, we picked up some good pips on the Euro JPY this week, all right, uh, or at least last week. And the same thing will happen on this. If we can go ahead and move up, we're going to be picking up pips on both entry points, both entry points towards the target. But I don't want to be, get too greedy. I don't want price to go ahead and miss out the target, work its way all the way down, and then I have to work in some more positions in order to, be able to get back into profit again, all right? So... We want to watch this very, very carefully. Uh, all right, so that's the Aussie uh, US dollar. Now, the other trades that are not currently set up right now, uh, and let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, man, it's getting really hot in this. Uh, I'm going to have to switch on the air right here a little bit. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, air doesn't make too much noise, but I'm going to go ahead and switch it on right here. All right, so we've got, the, uh, we've got a couple of trades that we'll still pin in on, right? Euro JPY. This trade is not picked up yet. Let's go take a look and see what's going on with Euro JPY. Why are we not picking up a trade on Euro JPY this morning, or at least this week? All right, let's take a look here. So this is Euro JPY. We can see we have an only target. Price did go into an oversold condition right here. All right, but it happened very early in the week. It didn't. Uh, we had, we only trade from 8 p.m. in the evening on Sunday. And, and that is Eastern Standard Time. And since then, prices just move sideways, right? Which is good, right? If it moves sideways, if it moves sideways, we're then going to expect some expansion move, right? And it's going to do something like this. And um, I'm hoping that's going to be first a bearish move before it takes on a bullish move. Now, we did uh, notice right here that uh, the JPY is actually moving uh, the most... Uh, in strength this morning. JPY is uh, the strongest currency pair over the last 24 hours and the US dollar is the second strongest. But if you look at this right here, we see that Euro uh, Euro JPY has really been sideways. Not a lot of movement out of this particular pair right here. All right. And it may be because we've got a slight weakness on the uh, on the uh, Euro. Um, actually, no, my bad. Um, no, if we've got slight weakness on the Euro, we've got strength in JPY, you would think that we'll get a breakout to the downside, right? You'd think that price would break down to the downside and then go ahead and work its way back up. Typically, what we're expecting is that expansion move, right? Expansion move where it goes ahead and breaks down, comes back up again, and then starts trending, all right? We're not seeing that at all. And with a weak euro, strong JPY, that's a good combination to see price breakout consolidation. So it is weird that we're not seeing a breakout in that. I'm not sure exactly why. There's no news coming out this week on that. Uh, we do. We have, of course, pound rate decisions, not euro. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Let's get back to the technicals. All right. So we're going to go ahead and take a look over here. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look right here. Does anyone hear the air conditioning running? Uh, because it got really hot in this uh, studio. And I had to put some air on. Um, is it making a real terrible noise or is it something we can still work through? All right, if you hear it, I don't want this, I don't want that sound to come through. So if you do hear it, let me know. Uh, and I'm definitely going to go ahead and make some changes. Um, all right. Edwin says, good morning. Craig, Craig, finally found it. Good, Craig. I'm glad you made it, buddy. I'm glad you made it. Good morning, Karen. Jamie says, good morning. Big dog, good morning, Jamie. Frank, what's up, Frank? All right, good to have you guys in the room. All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see what else we've got going here. So it doesn't look like we're going to get too much action from the Euro JPY this, this week. And uh, uh, all right, good. Joe says don't hear anything. All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, we've got the Euro JPY. Let's go take a look at Euro Pound. 
and see what's going on with Euro Pound this week. And Euro Pound's hit its target so far. So we've already hit the target on Euro Pound. And I believe we set this up as a low probability. Yes, we did. Check it out. There it is. So it was a low probability. Trade never took place. Uh, let's go ahead and cancel this right here. So this is no trade. Euro JPY, no trade. Let's go take a look at Euro US dollar. Euro US dollar right here. Still no trade right here. You can see price is still trying to chase after that target. We do have, uh, uh, we don't have an oversold condition yet. Looks like price is trying to push um, the the market down a little bit, and uh, but we don't have a trade yet. This could be this could be something that could take place. Do I have this set up as a low probability? No, I don't. Okay, good. Yeah, because it looks like we may get in on the euro US dollar this week. You know, with that being said. Let's take a look at the dollar index. See what's going on with the dollar index. Uh, we didn't speak about the dollar, dollar index this week. Uh, actually, in fact, the 2020 event that we had uh, taking place last week, we spoke a lot about this. And, okay, so here we go. So, traders, we are in, I believe, I really believe we're still in this A and looking for a B move before we see a C move. So we've seen some slight bullishness in the dollar. I believe we're going to see a still a short-term bearish move. Short-term bearish move. I can see that, yes, we have had strong dollar this the last 24 hours. But I, I believe we're going to see a recovery in the dollar. All right, dollar's going to, or not recovery, but a, a bit of loss in the dollar. And, and then a recovery in the dollar. Um, so I'm expecting dollar to find a bit of resist resistance before actually moving down south. Now, um, I'm looking to see if there's anything to the left that could possibly help this move go further down south. And I'm looking over here, and I'm not really seeing anything at the moment right now that I could use that could show that we've got resistance here that could drive this market down. I'm not even seeing any swing. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Well, if traders, if you look very, very carefully at this last bullish move that we had right here, notice something right here. Notice that price moved up. Then we had a dip. Then we had a rally. We had a little bit of consolidation, which is normally in a fourth wave move. And now we have this breakout, which looks like it could be a fifth wave move right here. So if I go ahead and take, If I go ahead and take some FIBS, place it on that candle low and this candle high, and I see price here at the 127, then I'm going to say that we are pretty much at a possible uh, hidden resistance level. All right, we're had a hidden resistance level. And so price is going to go ahead and turn around and head back south and take out the previous wave 4, which is this one right here. So we are going to see price turn around, head down south, come down here as I anticipated, and then go ahead and start seeing price move back up again. So this is going to happen. It's just a matter of time. All right? It's just a matter of time. So very cool. I like that. I like where we're at with the, uh, the dollar index. So with that being the case then, let's go back to the Aussie US dollar. Yeah, okay, here's the Aussie US dollar right here. Why am I going to the Aussie US dollar? It's because I'm anticipating, all right, price to move up. And the only way price can move up is if we either have a strong Aussie or we have a weak US dollar. Now, we've got some data coming out this evening, all right, it's going to be the CPI. There it is, there. You can see uh, CPI. Uh, and then we've got trim mean CPI quarterly data. So, with this quarterly data coming out, if we see some upside uh, data, which means positive data, if we see some positive data, this could be uh, this could help drive the market back up north. Also, could the federal uh, funds rate, could we see a, a, a hold in the rates, and that could be a bearish move on the dollar as well tomorrow. 
So this could all unfold over the next few days. We could see this definitely unfold in the next few days. So we could see some strong move up north. Now, I don't know. You know, fundamentals are weird, right? Fundamentals are weird. Fundamentals don't always do what we expect it to do. And, and so maybe the news out this evening, maybe the news out this evening creates what we call a whiplash, right? Which is part of an expansion move. What it's going to do is it goes ahead and breaks south first. So the news comes out, it's positive. Everyone's like, woo, let's jump on. It's positive. Let's go ahead and buy, 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 buy. But what happens is price moves down first, right? It moves down. I like to call that a uh, washed and rinse. Do you know what washed and rinse is? All right? Wash and rinse is actually a broker term. All right? This is where they go ahead and clean up your stops, take you out of the market before price moves up. It's like brokers like to clean up the, the, the orders. And so it's called a wash and rinse. This is actually it's not just a broker term, but this is an old a bank trader that taught me this strategy. And basically what it is, is price, even though price moves down, that's not actually where price is at. That's not where the market price is at. Now, keep in mind, brokers have a range where they want to keep price at, right? Now, back in the day, it sounds like I'm pretty old right now, but back in the day, around about 2001, we used to do a lot of scalping. And uh, what we found out is, of course, brokers want to stick around a certain level where the market price is at, right? They've got a range. They, they try and be, they, they, they spread a little bit above and a little bit below where they want to keep their price in. So they can play around with inside that region. But they want to make sure that they stay uh, or at least keep the market price in the middle of their range where they want to go ahead and you know, move their bid and, bid and ask prices around. So this is the deal. Back in the day, if they go ahead and if, if the market price moves outside their range, all right, we could take advantage of that. We could get in and actually buy the market, knowing that they away from the market, buy the market, and they would fill our orders at that price. But you see, brokers got a little bit clever over the days, right? Or over the years, all right? They've got a little bit cleverer. And so what they've done now is now they just reject your order. If they go ahead and find out that they, they lag in and they're behind price, they'll just go ahead and reject your order. So what happens is when we have this big spike down, all right? Unless you sell it, they'll fill you if you sell it because they know you're going in the wrong direction. All right, they will they will sell your order all day long. But if you're buying, you're going to struggle to get in. You know, depends of course on how many lot sizes you have. All right, depending on how many lot sizes, how much you're trading. But if you're trading with the big lot, you're not going to get in. They're going to reject that order all day long. They're not going to get you in because they know what they're doing is the wash and rinse, baby. All right. They're going to clean up orders, push price down, and then allow price to move back, back up again. And you've seen that a lot, right? You've seen the news comes out, market moves in the opposite direction. You go, what? Are you kidding me? Well, just remember what I told you. It's the wash and rinse, all right? Down, back up again. So if, coming back to our situation right here, if price does go ahead and work its way back down right here, just to get to this level right here of support, That'll be a good place to want to go ahead and start buying. Now, we're already in on two positions. We may get a third position in right here. So we may pick up three positions, which is pretty cool. And then if we go ahead and trade back up again, we can go ahead and look to take a profit on this pair. So I'm still looking at this as probably a bit of strength out of the Aussie news tomorrow night, or sorry, this evening. And then uh, with the US news, expecting maybe some weaker US dollar, and that'll drive the market back up on this particular pair right here all right john good morning john says good morning to everyone um yeah karen says uh, the link was only on twitter this uh this uh, today uh karen you should have got a, a, a an, an update did you uh, and, and just for the uh, for those traders that have subscribed to the channel firstly thank you very much i do appreciate you guys secondly if you've subscribed to the channel, in order for you to get notifications on your phone uh, or through email, you've got to go ahead and click on the notification bell. All right? If you do that, you should get a notification when I go live. And you also should get a, an email reminder or, or an email stating that, hey, FX Big Dog's gone live. So check out your email, check out your notifications, make sure that you've checked your, your junk mail perhaps, maybe it's gone to junk mail, um, and then go ahead and listen as uh, 
as uh, good mail instead of spam mail. All right, that may help. Um, okay, now um, Edward says, uh, Gary, do you understand? Uh, do you understand it correctly that if price is starting to move out of the contraction to expansion, it means that uh, it means that initial movement is in the direction of the trending move which will happen later all right so this is what it does edward all right it does this if you talk about expansion and, and contraction market moves inside contraction then we have expansion then we have trend all right so what happens is yes we want to see price move out of these levels oh by the way sorry my bad i did that wrong so we have contraction oh i'm doing this horribly uh we have contraction then we have the first false breakout we have the second false breakout then it starts moving in a trend all right so we have contraction expansion one and two then trend all right that's how it works all right that's how it works and so if we were to see the market move in a range here and we're looking for the fifth wave then we'd have first breakout second breakout then train all right and that'll then go ahead and give us our wave four and then our wave five down here all right so that's how we'd be expecting expansion into train all right um all right cool let's go ahead and take a look and, our, and what else we've got going here this week and i think we've got everything pretty much covered so we've got some pound cat and pound um pound cat and pound jpy both of these uh, pairs right here looking for something this morning so pound cat and pound jpy let's take a look so i've seen a little bit of bearishness on the dollar uh or at least the uh, okay there it is all right, so pound Canadian looks like it's hit its target this week. So that's a hit target, pound Canadian. Let's go take a look at pound JPY. And pound JPY, not quite. So we may end up getting a trade on pound JPY this week. Haven't seen it yet, but we may just go ahead and get it. This is another example of that expansion phase, Edward. All right? So as we go into expansion right here, uh, sorry, into contraction. Now we see an expansion. So the price moves down. Well, then we'll be looking for price to go up and then start trending, right? So this is where we're at. Let's go ahead and take a look at, oh, by the way, and also what you can do here as well, take the tops and bottoms right here of this range. And let's measure that out. We've got about what? About 78 pips. So we could be expecting about a 78 pip drop. So we could see price moving a little lower from where it's at right now okay we're looking for about about here so around about here is where we can expect price to move down to this is where we can expect price to start bouncing back up again and that's around about one uh 141.20 so around about 141.20 give or take a few this is where we can start expecting price to move back up again All right. Um, all right. So we've got. Let's go ahead and update. So the updated uh, document right here is going to say, "Yeah, we got a hit target." So just like that was a hit target there, this is a hit target as well, and this means that there is no penny position. Trade is no trade on that one there, and then here we've got still a hit target, waiting for price to go ahead and pick up, and and both of them were low probabilities. But the more and more I look at the uh, pound JPY now, you know, pound JPY looks like it could actually go ahead and become a, I'm going to move that, I'm going to move this from a low probability to actually something that could be happening for us this week. All right, and then we've got, uh, let's take a look right here, pound New Zealand dollar, let's take a look at pound New Zealand dollar. and pound new zealand dollar it is looking still healthy oh now the price is starting to work its way back down maybe we're not going to get to that but hey i'm going to leave this out there and say hey we still got a pound new zealand dollar opportunity this week 
All right, so that's still happening. Uh, let's take a look over here. Aussie New Zealand dollar, we're looking for a buy on Aussie New Zealand dollar. And that is something we did speak about this week. Uh, we said, hey, we could see a nice little uh, move on uh, Aussie New Zealand dollar this week going bullish. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Let's take a look. Aussie New Zealand dollar. Well, it's now becoming a low probability. You can see right here, price um, is not quite doing what we expect. Uh, and uh, check this out. Uh, Edward, here's another one. And, and, I, and I love it when I when I see these patterns appearing. All right. But take a look right here, Edward. See how this goes ahead and creates this expansion, right? Or oh, this creates this uh, uh, contraction right here. Now this happened, a, this went a little bit different and it's, it's, it's possible for price to, to uh, do, do something a little different. Um, so this we had a, a contraction, then we had expansion here, one, two, it didn't quite take out the highs, it tested it, but then it went a bit lower right here and now we're going to go into trend. So here was a little different expansion uh, phase right here that we went into right about here. Um, so not quite the traditional breakouts that we're looking at. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, let's see here. What else is it that we've got? So it uh, looks like we've probably got a low probability. I'm gonna I'm gonna change this one to low probability right here on this trade. All right, low probability. All right, and then. The last pair that we've got here is US dollar Canadian, US dollar CAD. And let's go ahead and take a look at the chart. Then we were looking for a bearish move on this. Let's go to the chart right here. And yeah, we can see that price has not moved in an overbought condition yet. It's moving pretty slow right now. Uh, with a bit of dollar strength, you would think that it would go ahead and rally. But you can see that we also got some Canadian strength too. And if that's the case, let's take a look at do uh, US oil. Because US oil was selling off pretty solid. And let's see here. Yep, we found a bit of support right down here. So we may be able to, get, we may start seeing a little bit of strength coming to play. This pair is, the, the, the US oil has definitely gone in the direction that I expected, but it is certainly hasn't pulled back, retraced as much as I thought it would. Now we moved all the way to the 1.618. We're definitely going to see some sort of correction move, all right, and maybe a final move down here below $51 a barrel, and then start seeing the market move back up again because we are range bound, and I don't think we're going to break out of this range. If we do, we'll take a look. That's great if we do. But I don't think we're going to see that. And if we do see some uh, some recovery in the U.S. oil, that means that the U.S. CAD will then go ahead and move bearish. So we'll see a U.S. CAD bearish move if we start seeing some recovery in U.S. oil. And, and then again, if we do see some weak data coming out this week in the dollar index, which is based on the FOMC uh, this week, and that's on Wednesday, we've got FOMC press conference, but we've got the Federal Rates. Keeping the, keeping the rates unchanged, everything will come down to the statement. And if we do see some weaker dollar, then maybe we may see a bearish move on the US dollar CAD. And if we see a bearish move on US dollar CAD, what does that mean? Well, check at that. We've got a bit of resistance here as well. If you look at the technicals, we are hitting a bit of resistance right about here. There it is there. And so what position are we looking for right now? We're looking for a bearish move on US dollar CAD. That's what we're looking for. But we, we, we don't see price in an overbought condition yet. So we're not in. But if we do get in on this, I think this is going to be one of the one of the better trades this week because we're trading right at resistance. And if we sell at resistance, we should have no problem getting down to this target right here. And that should be about an 80, maybe a little bit more, maybe a, over 100 pips on this trade. So this is going to be probably one of the better trades this week just because the technicals on the large time frame are also lining up with the setup right here so that pretty much wraps it up this morning
trades. Hopefully, you guys picked up some good pick, um, picks, but also some great ideas of exactly how to be able to approach the market, trade it, manage it. Um, look out for a video this week. I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, this strategy in a video and put it together explaining exactly why. Why this strategy is so effective, but also more importantly, why there's certain aspects in the strategy that we have to pay attention to. And that is going to be on equity management. Very important that we, 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 we know. Look out. With any trading, you've got to have good equity management in your trading, right? But this specific strategy works very well, but we have to pay attention to how we manage the risk. Too many traders, because of the high strike rate we get on this, too many traders get too excited and go ahead and over leverage and put their trades into, in, in, in uh, putting too many trades. And I've, I've done it myself. Listen, I am guilty as charged, right? I've done it myself and I've struggled and I've had trading accounts that are really, really did bad just because of one thing bad money management rules, all right? So, very importantly, traders, we have to pay attention to the, the actual. Uh, risk that we're applying to it and I'll go ahead and talk about that in the video. All right traders with that being said have an awesome day We'll see you back again tomorrow in the next video. This is FX Big Dog signing out